Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today I will give you an introduction to pruning. Later on in other videos, I will expand on the practices, training, and principles of pruning. So to begin with, I'm sitting here in an early photo of the Frey Vineyard in Fallon, Nevada. So what is pruning? Pruning is the act of removing vegetative parts of the vine. This does not include fruit. This is the shoot, canes, trunk that you need that's part of the shoot. So why prune a vine? First of all, to remove any excess shoot growth that is not needed or wanted in the vineyard. But more importantly, to provide a balanced growth for maximum fruit production and quality. Pruning is one of the most important practices that you can perform and is also one of the more time-consuming practices. Severe pruning can cause excessive vegetative growth, and that's not desirable. Inadequate pruning causes excessive fruit demand, and therefore you get uneven ripening and poor quality fruit. Just remember that fruit comes from the second year wood and fruiting is set the year before. And finally, we prune to fit the vines to some sort of training or harvesting system. How do grapes grow naturally? On the left here, you can see some wild grapes in the Southern Nevada desert, which are, have no trees to grow on and sprawl basically everywhere. This is my graduate student, John Baggett, as we were on a trip exploring these unusual wild grapes. On the right, you can see a vine that is more typical of their native habitats in which they're growing in trees and forests, and they can grow up the, up the tree to get to the sunlight. So they have these tendrils on them, and that's why they adapted, are adapted as a vine to be able to grow up trees, get to the top of the canopy, and reach for light. Now, just as a reminder of what the vine structure is, we have a trunk. We have, we are going to prune that trunk to these arms, which are sort of modified trunks or cordons as they're called. And then in many cases, we will be using spur pruning or we could be using cane pruning. And I will get into that in a little bit more detail. I just wanna emphasize that along this shoot, there are a number of different buds, and at the top is the apex. And the apex controls these buds to some extent through something called apical dominance. This is hormonally controlled by the hormone oxen, but other hormones are also involved. And as a result of this apical dominance, this apex will inhibit the growth of the nearby buds. And as you get further and further away from that, you begin to start to see the growth of lateral shoots. But this also influences cane in a dormant state so that the first buds to break in the, in the winter spring period are at the tip. And these then inhibit the bud break of buds lower down. So uh, just to remind you that pruning and training are designed to produce an optimal leaf area to the fruit ratio. That is, we want a balanced amount of leaf area that supports the development of the fruit. If we have them out of balance, too much leaf area, then we're putting more energy into the leaves and not as much into the fruit. We have too too much fruit, and we don't have enough leaf area to produce the sugars to support the development of the fruit. So we control this by pruning and in training and the type of trellis that we might use that would define how we prune or train those vines. And that's dependent upon 
the climate that you're growing in and maybe your soil conditions as well. Two typical, uh, or sorry, three typical training systems are the uh, cordon system in which we have these arms branching off and typically they are spur pruned. So we have this broken down into cordon training on the wire here, and then we produce these spurs. Then we may have a cane system, which is slightly different in which we grow out a cane the year before and then in the spring we lay it down on the wire and we produce a renewal spur that will be used later on for the next season. And then we have a goblet system or a head train system in which we produce our spurs off of a goblet sort of form or shape that produces shoots that are all about the same height. And here are some images of that. In this particular case, we have a single or unilateral cord on. So in this case, this is what we used in our UNR vineyard. And here we have a bilateral cord on. And then we can see here a cane system and a goblet train system. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of these different pruning systems? Let's start with a head training system. First of all, you don't have a trellis. Trellis is one of the major costs of a vineyard, it can cost up to $10,000 or more per acre, depending on the quality and development of the trellis. There are cheaper trellis systems out there. But obviously, without a trellis, you don't have that large investment in the vineyard. So this reduces your expense. A head train system has been shown to uh, affect water use and, and drought tolerance. The plants being uh, able to be more drought tolerant in these kinds of conditions. A disadvantage is that it's more difficult to move your tractors through a vineyard that is head and trained. And another disadvantage to some extent is there are less productive systems compared to the cordon or cane system with trellising. However, the head train system gives a more dappled light penetrating through the canopy. So these vines are hanging over and allowing light to penetrate through and onto the fruit. And because if the, if the vine canes are all, or shoots are all coming off at about the same height, there's not this apical dominance issue and you get more even and higher, more even ripening and higher fruit quality. Now the cordon system is perhaps the most commonly used today and at least in California. And it is a more productive system. You can organize your vineyard in, in ways that allow more vines in, per acre, for example, and also in narrow rows to create space to get your tractors through in a more dense type of planting. You get more even ripening as compared to the cane system. It's an easier system to manage. The cane system, you have less evening, even ripening, and this is due to the fact that you're growing out a cane out along a wire, and you're at your shoot tip, you're getting your buds breaking first, and then as you go back along that, that cane, you'll, you'll start to get other buds breaking. So you're getting an uneven ripening of those grapes along that cane. There's a bit more effort in training because you have to lay down and tie that cane to the wire. But one of the advantages of the cane system is that you can get better protection against frost damage in the spring because those buds break later, if there should be a frost when only the first few buds are breaking, you may lose those buds, but you still have protection for the other buds, and so you're more likely to get fruit, whereas with the cordon system, your whole vineyard might be damaged at the same time. So pruning systems that we've used at UNR 
up in the northern part of Nevada in Reno. We've used a single cordon system with a VSP. Um, that's a vertical shoot positioning system. I'll talk more about that when we talk about trellis designs. And we uh, aim for eight spurs. This gives us two shoots off of those spurs. And if we get two clusters per spur, that gives us 32 clusters of fruit per vine which we found with our spacing system and our climate has produced us with optimal quality and optimum survival of the vines in the wintertime. We use a system of a single cordon based on some work or thoughts by Wayne Johnson, a cooperative extension agent here who was working with table grapes to minimize sun damage in the winter. I frankly have never seen the sun damage in the winter, but since we designed that, vineyard in that way we kept that system going in that direction. Many people use a bilateral cordon perhaps to get more uniform development and ripening in the vines than a single cordon. Okay and then we've also tested the Gaio system, the, the cane system, and we're not, we're not in our particular conditions finding that it was necessary due to Protection for protection against the frost system, but you may find yourself in an area where that might be particularly necessary. We decided not to use it because of the, the potential effect on uneven ripening of the grapes by the end of harvest time. Now, those of you in the south in Las Vegas will have to have different considerations. Up in the north, we're less concerned about heat, but in the south, uh, you are, and typical, a good system that would be good for your area would be a head trained or spur pruning system, such as a bush or goblet, is the same terms for the same sort of design. And I mentioned some of the advantages before, but I'll mention it again. It provides more uniform grape ripening, shade for the vines, and you don't have to have a trellis. It's also got the advantage of being more drought tolerant, which may be important if you have a if you have reduced water. The other system you might consider would be a single wire type trellis system with a cordon and spurs, but with a sprawl rather than a vertical shoot positioning system. This will protect the fruit a little bit from the high intensity heat and sunlight that you have in your environment. I wanna thank you then for uh, listening to me today. I hope you found this information useful. If you do, please like this video so that it can be highlighted to others. Your act of, of liking this video will uh, put it into a higher profile to be more visible to other people on YouTube. Thank you. Goodbye.